not work for the, the food that perishes, but for the food that gives eternal life. Can you raise the volume a little bit more? Uh, the mic. So do not work just for the food to eat, to fill your stomachs, but to strive to work for that food that nourishes into eternal life. This Sunday and the, the upcoming Sundays, we'll be hearing from the discourse of the bread of life. That's the Gospel of John chapter 6, uh, in which it's one of the central uh, scriptural foundations for the understanding of the Holy Eucharist, Jesus Christ, truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Eucharist, the bread that has come down from heaven. I would like to start by sharing my experience uh, uh, couple, uh, two weekends ago when I was at the National Eucharistic Congress. You see, as a nation, the Conference of Catholics Bishops who have been leading our nation into a sense of revival in the understanding, the appreciation, the love of the Holy Eucharist, the great gift that is given to us by Christ himself. Do this in memory of me, my body, my blood. Now, at the na raise your hand if you heard about the National Eucharistic Congress. You saw some of the videos, pictures. Um, so I was there in the midst of 60 plus 60,000 Catholics. Uh, among them, we had uh, six of our parish. Dave was there, Sue was there, uh, Ray, Terry, Patty, and Miss Patty Rios also. Uh, we were present there. And to see that ocean of just people in that stadium, that was the Luca Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. Uh, and the ones, the speakers after the next speaker, they were all just top of the line uh, uh, speakers, nationally recognized. It was just one home run after, after another one. They were just great. And by the way, those conferences are, if you go to EWTN in the YouTube channel, you will find those homilies. I highly uh, suggest you listen to them, all of them. They were really, really, really good. But for me, one of the highlights was, you know, at the end of the, uh, the conference, the last talk every night, after that, it followed the Eucharistic adoration. And boy, to be in a stadium full of more than 60,000 people, and when the Blessed Sacrament arrived, the Eucharistic Lord, in a procession with the altar servers, the seminarians, the candles, the incense, the spotlight, and all of Sony, from the appearance of the Blessed Sacrament, more than 60,000 just fall on their knees. And then silence. A deep, profound silence, inconceivable to have an experience among 60,000 people. Actually, one of the souvenirs, that, this is my souvenir, the one thing that I brought from there, uh, they were selling this. Uh, revival starts here. Remember, we're in the stadium. We didn't have any pews. These were our, our, our kneelers. And everywhere there was uh, uh, people were kneeling. They get out their little kneelers. And, uh, and truly, revival starts here in our knees, recognizing the Eucharistic Lord, his body, blood, soul, and divinity as a gift that continues to be given to us right here. Now, the evil one doesn't waste any opportunity to tempt you, even in the most glorious of moments. So there I was in this stadium, and here comes the voice of the evil one say, saying to me, come on, do you really believe that Jesus Christ is there in that piece of bread? <laughs> Wasting no time. And just as sudden as the temptation and the voice came into my head, I felt the presence of the Lord saying to me, let faith of the church carry you. Let the faith of the church carry you. And as I'm looking at 60,000 Catholics, representation of the beauty and the power of the Catholic Church, of our belief and our faith, and they were all in their knees. Let the faith of the church carry you. Those words still, still, they're still echoing in my heart. And, and then on Saturday, when we had, the, they had a procession, a Eucharistic procession, as good Catholics, we go out into the streets, Mass is ended, go in peace. 
And out there in the middle of downtown Indianapolis, we, we had a procession that was scheduled a mile distance from the convention center to the Memorial Park. Uh, and then it was asked for those plus 60,000 Catholics who were there uh, to, to be in the banks, in the sidewalks of the street. The street was closed down. So imagine 60,000 Catholics, right, just shoulder to shoulder next to each other through that one mile. It was not long enough for all the people we had. And then you had like two, three, four, five rows of people, one behind the other. And here comes the great procession. First, the, the sisters came in. It was the sisters or seminarians. Who came first? Probably the sisters, lady first. No. Oh, well, not, not in the auditorium. When we did it in downtown, in the streets. So I think it was the sisters. I don't know, because I was in the back with the priest. So the sisters came in, and there was hundreds of sisters, all in their habits, all joyful and smiling, many of them being young, that it was like in radiating in that joy and the grace and the beauty of being the bride of Christ. All different habits, different colors, different styles. It was just, and then hundreds, one after another, after another. And then came the seminarians, hundreds of seminarians, young men preparing to the priesthood, all dressed up in their black cassock and their surplus, you know, and, and very, and then, and as the people were, as they were, they were walking in, in the procession in the middle of the street, just people were chanting them up, we love you, keep working it, don't give up. And to the sisters, we love you, we love you. And then came the, the hundreds and hundreds of priests afterwards. I was the last one. <laughs> I stayed in the end. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to be in the end. Uh, but it was just hundreds and hundreds of priests. And then after the priest came the bishop, and after the bishop, two cardinals, and at the end, the Eucharistic Lord. The one just pushing all along in a victorious way through that victorious entrance. It was like I was thinking, this is the closest that I will ever experience to what it is if, in God's mercy, I'm allowed to enter into the new Jerusalem in procession with the saints, with the holy men and women, all the martyrs and all those who, who, who gave their lives in service victoriously with branches that for me that was revelation in a fullness of what would it be in the ends of time halfway mark so it was almost like a straight line and then there's a, a monumental a huge memorial uh, and you have to go around it and it's i actually looked it up is the statue of victory and and the whole monument uh is only 15 feet shorter than the statue of the liberty so it was huge, you know, right in the middle of the downtown. That's where we were. So as we were processing in, you see this huge monument. And then at the base, there are like 10, 15, 20 rows of steps, you know, as before you get to the base of the memorial. And all those 15, 20 steps just filled with people. So as you were walking, you were walking straight to a crowd that were just cheering and praising God. And, and as we walked, you could hear spontaneously the Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Holy God, we pray. And all just spontaneously, just, just happening. And people just saying, we love you, Father, we love you. It was just so powerful. And when I went around the corner, it was, I was so overwhelmed with love and encouragement, I just started crying. The other half of the one mile, it was just me in tears, just crying. And then coming to the realization, for the past 25 years of my life, I've been swimming against the current of a modern pagan society. And there, for the first time, I was being carried by the faith of the church. I wasn't pulling, I wasn't pushing, I wasn't preaching, I wasn't trying to do anything, but just carried by the faith of the church. I know how difficult it is to live in this world where it seems like everything is against what we believe and what we stand for. And it is like swimming against the current constantly. We just get used to it. And after 
we give up and allow ourselves to be taken by the currents of society and begin to say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And we don't even care anymore. But to take a stand and to say no takes great effort. And when it gets tough and difficult, that's the time when you have to allow yourself to be carried by the faith of the church. The one who is carrying it is the Father. The one who is leading is Jesus Christ. The one who is sustaining it is the Holy Spirit. You have to claim that power in order to make it possible. This weekend, we, we are, we're talking about you know, promoting our family ministry. Uh, and in many ways, young families with children, you're having it worst because you're trying to raise children against the current and currents that often are much stronger than you, your own influence. But don't give up. As a parish today, what I want you to all to consider, everyone here, think and pray about this, discern about this. How can I be part of that crowd that is sustaining, encouraging, and carrying our young families and our youth into living out their faith? Everyone has to take a part in this, not just the catechist. We need catechists. We need assistance. We need, we need so many different positions. At the end of the Mass, I want you to eventually make your way towards the back. Talk to Sandra. Talk to Anna. Talk to Alondra. Ask, how can I help? How can I sustain others and carry them in our Catholic faith? Because it is in doing that that then you will find yourself being carried by the faith of the church. I want to recognize some of the people that that I, I, you know, in the spirit of being carried by the faith. One, I, I want to congratulate you on, on having your, how many children were baptized? Your two, uh, one and two. The two children that were baptized yesterday together with a total of eight kids who were baptized yesterday. I also want to congratulate, where are you? You just got the newlyweds. Where are you? I saw you. Uh, stand up, stand up. Uh, uh, um, why is there such a gap between both of you here? <laughs> All right, whoever's in between, you get up. Oh, the whole gang is there, the whole family, okay. And I, actually, the whole family stand up, because that would be an example of how we can carry and so they don't want to get up, okay. You see, it's difficult to swim against the current. <laughs> and their testimony is quite beautiful. You mind if I share a little bit about what, a little bit? Okay. I was talking to, to the wife. Uh, she's the one who, without knowing it, initiated all of this. She was just feeling like something was missing in her life. And she's like, and she prayed, said, Lord, I don't know what to do. You, 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 you lead me. You show me where to go. And she ended up coming here to San Rita. With that, she registered to the RCA, the Ritual of Catholic Initiation for Adults. And she began to prepare herself just by herself, not thinking of husband, children. Well, they all will have to do whatever they have to do. She was seeking it out for herself. Now, the husband was beginning to see changes happening in her for the good. And in one of the, our past Lenten renovation when we clean up the church and so she invited her husband, you know, as you could tell, he was a pretty healthy boy. <laughs> He's like, I think you could help out in the cleaning. Come, come. And he came, and at the, we were talking about it, how it all started. I was in the social hall. I was looking for someone to put together a furniture. I saw him big and healthy. He said, you, come and help me. And he said, okay. And he came to me, and I asked him to do a couple of things. From there, we're having a conversation. Then we're having lunch. Then the topic comes. And one thing leads to another, he's now also accompanying the wife into the RCA program. And he tells me, and Anna, if, if you're around here, this is to your credit, she says, you know, I, you, you brought me in, but Anna, and the way she shared her faith, and the way she was just loving, and, 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 and understood where I was coming from, and helped me to understand, she opened my heart. And then from there, the rest. Now they're both, he was baptized, 
got baptized uh, on Friday. Baptized, first communion, confirmation. They both got married. She got confirmed. And the children now, I, I hope, will continue to prepare themselves so that the entire family can be carried by the faith of the church. Not too long ago, how many of your kids were b b first communion and confirmation? One first communion and, and three confirmations. And the beauty, oh, let's, there's Alondra, I mean, uh, Anna. Good job, we were just talking about you, Anna. Uh, so one, bab, one first communion, three confirmation, this is, this is a homeschool family, which I, I love, because we have so different, different settings. And prepare to receive the sacrament and come into the church to be carried by the faith of the church. You see, it takes a whole family. It takes the whole church to sustain a current that goes against the currents of society and sustains each other in the faith. So I leave you with that. Just don't work just to feed your belly. Don't work just for the food that perishes. Work for the food that nourishes you, nourishes others, and gives you life eternal. And working at something like the family ministry that is in so much need of help, in doing so, we will be nourished. We will be nourishing others and sustaining each other in the faith of our church. I hope after Mass you talk to either Anna, Londra, and Sandra and discern. Even if it's at least being an intercessor for the ministry of the family so that we can be sustained by the faith of the church. Don't work just for the food that nourishes your belly, but work for the bread that gives you eternal life.